Hello everyone, my name is Evo and welcome to Cooking with the Koyas. Today folks we are going to make another one of those yet classic Italian cookies. This one is called the Mustacciolo and the Mustacciolo is so delicious but believe it or not only a few ingredients, very very easy to make. Typically enjoyed in Italy during holidays, especially Easter and Christmas, but it's one of my favorites. I enjoy it all year round. In fact, my sister-in-law, Franca, this is her recipe that she brought back from Italy with her, and we've been enjoying it for many, many years. Now we're going to share it with you. Let's get started. As I mentioned, some simple ingredients. We're going to start off here with all-purpose flour. I've got 670 grams of all-purpose flour, which is equivalent to um, five cups. And to that, I'm going to add one teaspoon of baking soda. And we're just going to mix that in. That's it for our dry ingredients. Simple. Now let's get our wet ingredients ready. Our wet ingredients, we start off with one egg yolk and one egg. Large egg, preferably. Okay. And to that, we are going to add one half teaspoon of vanilla. Now, of course, if you have real vanilla, it's always best, but if not, artificial vanilla is perfectly fine. Okay, we've added our vanilla. Now, we're gonna add honey, lots of honey. In fact, two and a half cups of honey. There's one cup, look how beautiful that honey is. Oh my goodness, okay. One cup of honey, and in fact, I'm just going to use a spatula and we'll get all of that beautiful honey out of here, most of it anyway. Okay, and then a second cup of honey. Oh, look at that, I love it. And let's add a half. And perfect. There we go. In goes. Again, spatula. Got it. So, two and a half cups of honey. And to that, we are going to add molasses. Yes, molasses. This adds an amazing flavor to these cookies. So, we're going to add one quarter cup of molasses. Yes, thick as molasses. Look how thick that is. Okay. One quarter cup of molasses, in it goes. Same thing, we'll just get our spatula or, and just get all that beautiful molasses out of our container. So all we're gonna do here is beat this just until all the ingredients are incorporated together. All right. And done. Okay, now quite simply, all we do is we add our wet ingredients to our dry ingredients. And again, our friend the spatula comes in handy here. We'll scrape all that out and get it in with our dry ingredients. Okay. And there we go. Now, just quite simply with your spatula, work the wet and dry ingredients together. And basically you want to get all that liquid absorbed into the flour. So just keep mixing around, mixing around, incorporating the flour. Eventually all the flour will be absorbed and you will not see any more white. In fact, that's how you'll know when you're done. When you don't see any more white, you know that everything's been absorbed and your batter will be ready. So as you're mixing, the batter is gonna to start to thicken up as the flour continues to absorb. And you can see there's still more white here. So we're just gonna, we're almost there. We're just gonna keep mixing until all that white is gone. And we've got ourselves a nice batter going here. Grab from underneath, make sure it's not white under there either. There we go. And you know what I always say, those of you who've tuned in, you know what I'm going to say <laughs> when you think you've mixed enough, just mix a little more. All right. I'm not seeing any white at all. 
our batter, folks, is good to go. Here we have our cookie sheet, which we are going to line with a sheet of parchment paper. Now, if you do not have parchment paper, you can just spray your pan to prevent uh, the cookies from sticking. But do not use butter on the bottom of the pan because it will actually burn these cookies. And in fact, when you put your parchment paper down to help it from shifting, a little tip from Laura is to wet your cookie sheet first. So I'm just gonna get this wet a little. So you, you just wet your cookie sheet and then you put your parchment on. This little trick works all the time. There we go. It just helps keep everything in place a little bit nicer. So now we're going to add our, our batter. You want to end up with about an inch thick of a cookie. I could add a little bit more, but I'm going to save this batter and do another smaller batch. So we'll put that aside. So that's, that's, that's perfect. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add some almonds. So we're going to space almonds relatively close together. Um, keeping in mind that when we cut these, they're going to cut like, they're going to be like the size of a, of a biscotti that you would, uh, or that you're accustomed to. Uh, like a finger, size of a finger more or less. So what I'm going to do is you leave a little bit of room so you're going to cut in between these, these almonds. So that's how thick one piece will be. So we're going to do two rows of almonds in fact and I'll tell you why. Get this row done here. Okay, and then a little piece on the end. Okay, great. Now we're going to also do another row opposite side here. And the reason for that is these are rather long. These would be really long. Let's call them long fingers if we were to cut them. So what I'm going to do is I'll make a cut up the middle this way, and then there'll be smaller pieces going in the other direction. So we're going to be nice bite-sized cookies is what I'm going to call all right, so let's continue with the almonds. Not only do these add a nice flavor, but they also look nice. Now our oven is preheating to 350 degrees. You want your oven good and hot when this goes in. And I'm running out of room there. Okay, and you know what? Since we have that little piece left over on the end there, We'll just put an extra little almond there just for, uh, for that one little piece. Okay, so our oven is almost ready. I'll give it a few more minutes. Once it hits temperature, we'll put this right in. Our oven is ready, and this is going to go in on the top shelf. Now, I would like to point out before I put it in, it's spread out and got a bit thinner. It's supposed to be about an inch thick, and at an inch thick, you normally cook it on the top shelf for about 35 minutes. But because it's thinner, I'm gonna have to keep an eye on it. But for now, we'll put it in and we'll check it at 30 minutes just to see. This one, on the other hand, with the leftover, I put in a small Pyrex here. And uh, this is about an inch thick, so this one I will put in once those are done. This one, for sure, will go 35 minutes uh, on the top shelf at 350. Okay, let me set my timer and we'll get right back to our original batch. Our 30 minute timer is now up. So let's take a look, see what we got. Oh, that looks absolutely perfect. Okay, I'm not gonna let it go the full 35, because as I said, that's thinner. So that comes out after 30 minutes. And then this little one here, which is a little bit thicker, we're gonna let that go in on the top shelf for 35 minutes. And as, oh my goodness, one thing about the baking, I think I love the aromas just as much as I love the baking part. It smells really good in the kitchen right now, but uh, in order before we cut into this, what I'm gonna let, you want it to cool down completely. So we're gonna let this cool and let this other one cook, and then we'll, uh, we'll cut into it. But it's looking really, really good right now. This one has gone the distance, the full 35 minutes. Let's turn our oven off and 
can see what we have here. A little bit hard coming off the top rack. Oh, that is absolutely perfect. Nice coloration to it. Beautiful. That's what we want right there. Okay. So like our larger one, this one now also will need to cool before we can cut into it. So I'm hoping you can see this one that's a little bit thinner, only cooked for 30 minutes, but see how it's a little bit darker? Whereas this one went the full 35 minutes, it's a little thicker and it's a little bit lighter in color. This is the ideal color. This color is still perfectly fine, uh, but I'm glad we took it out at 30 minutes. Otherwise you can see here almost just starting to burn just a bit on this corner here, as you can see. So this one has cooled enough that it can now, it can be cut. So we just remove the parchment. Okay, I'll get that out of the way. Oh, look at that, it actually fits perfectly. <laughs> okay, let's get a knife and cut into this mustacholio. Okay, I'm gonna wanna cut that up the middle, but because I put the, <laughs> that little bonus almond piece there, oops, a little crunchy. Okay, that's definitely well done. Hmm, cooked, it's cooked right through, that's great. So as I mentioned earlier, what I'd like to do now, uh, because they're so long, I'm gonna cut right up the middle. And as you can tell, the outside right here cooked a little bit more, but everywhere else is cooked just fine. Okay, and if you take a look at the inside of our loaf, that is ideal, ideal. Okay, and now from here, you can cut, so this is where it's gonna be a little bit, the over, a little bit that's cooked a little bit more, crunchy, okay, no problem. But this is where we're gonna to continue to cut just in between the almonds, and it's crunchy here on the edge, just on the edge. Okay, and you can continue to cut. Isn't that nice? That's a nice cookie right there. That's gonna be full of flavor and so tasty. So let me continue. Okay, and actually I'm gonna leave these a little bit bigger here because I'm gonna freeze this. These freeze up very, very nicely. So I've got a portion there and another portion here that I'm gonna freeze. And these ones I'm gonna eat fresh. And speaking of eating fresh, Let's give the taste test right now. And again, I just want to point out, this one here is cooked perfectly all the way around because it was thicker, so there's not going to be any hard edges to it. Whereas this one here has got a little bit of hard edge just on, on this side here and maybe a little bit here. But everywhere else, like here for example, very, very good. In fact, let's make that the first piece we taste. I absolutely love my mostaciolo. It is one of my favorites for sure. And it has the texture almost of like a bread, bread-like texture. Mmm, but the taste, <laughs> simply outstanding. Mmm. These will keep in the refrigerator with no problem for one to two weeks very, very easily. But these won't last one to two weeks, trust me. Oh my goodness, these are so tasty. They're airy, they're light, and they're full of flavor. All I need now is a cup of espresso. In fact, that's what I think I'm going to do next. Get myself a nice cup of espresso. If you've never ever tried the Mosta Cholo, you've got to give it a try. It is absolutely fantastic. I love it. Makes for a great little treat after dinner to have as a dessert or to put in your lunch along the way. Either way, you can't go wrong. Hope you give this recipe a try. Thanks again to my sister-in-law, Franca, for putting this recipe together. We've enjoyed it over the years. Hope you do too. Thanks again for tuning in. And until next time, bon appetito. Time to chew the almond. Mm-hmm. Excellent.